Hello everyone, it's Melanie. I am here with some uh, journaling cards that I've been making. I was watching Rachel at Roxy Creations and I decided to try something that was a little bit different for me. Um, and the things that she's been working on the last few days um, have been some tag journaling cards, but I just thought I would try her style, you know, um, or my, my spin on her style of doing journaling cards. And the thing that kind of got me thinking about it was, you know, I love watching her do her journaling cards, but, and I, and I especially like how they're very dimensional, how they have texture and things on them. But in my journal, I like to keep things fairly flat um, because I do write in it and stuff like that. So actually, this was Rachel kind of Rachel inspired, but then I was also watching um, Aozier, and I'll link to both of these ladies down below. And Aozier was showing um, some rose journals that she sold recently that are just gorgeous. But she um, she had made a copy of one of the journaling cards that she made, kind of in Rachel's style. And I thought, oh, that is a great idea because then I'd have these thinner cards. You know, I still get all the texture and whatnot, but then I'd have these thinner cards that I could actually journal on and it wouldn't take up bulk in my, in my book. So what I did, let's see, here's one for yesterday. So here's the ones I made in order. These are um, Tim Holtz die cuts. So I've got, um, this is the first one I made. It's got some burlap and um, of course I put a Rachel you know, inspired label on it and some tech, lots of texture. And then there's a doily back there. Then this was the second one I made. And this is also, I did, so I did three butterflies first. Um, and I put a little stamp on that one. And there's a green butterfly. And then the next set I did, I don't usually work with them, but I have a, a bunch of vintage photos. Um, and some of them that I, have collected are vintage ladies. <laughs> a lot of ladies with cars for some reason. But some of these um, ladies I thought, okay, well that, that might be kind of cute because you know, I'm trying to, I was also trying to do something that was a little bit different for me. So this one, I actually had, I used the original photo and then I took it back off, but um, you can see it here. There she is. So then I made these, this one's a sticker, and then these are um, actually Rachel Roxy Creations labels that I printed out. So there's this lady, oh my goodness, can you see her? She is fierce looking, I just love her. And I like this one, I put some black lace on it and whatnot. So I like the fact that these I could do, you know, when I put buttons, I put things on it and I don't have to worry about the bulk once it gets into my book. So last night I was gonna make a video and then I thought, well, I'm gonna practice. Let me just practice one more and make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm warmed up. So I did this one with a bird, kind of a blue, it's got a blue and purple thing going on. And then I was like, well, I'll do, I'll do one more. So I did this one with this uh, magnolia and some pink and stuff. And I want to stitch on here, but I've got dark green thread in my machine right now. So um, I'm going to wait to uh, change the thread. And then I did this one and then I thought, oh, I've already done now. I did three more and still didn't make a video. So just a couple of things I thought of when making these. I made this one. This is a copy. And then I glued some paper onto the back and then I stitched, this is real stitching. I stitched, I glued the paper to the back and then I also stitched around it. And I like that because I, in this I'm using that 32 pound um, Red River matte paper and so it's fairly thin. So I kind of liked gluing something onto the back of it because it gave it some structure. But when I was making these with the ladies on them, I thought, oh, that would look really cute stitched. So I went ahead and stitched around the outside edge of these. But what I didn't think about was then if I wanted to use these 
um, if I wanted to stitch around the outside of these later, then like this, I already have stitching in the copy in the, you know. So I think I'm gonna, even though I really love the stitching on them, I think I'm gonna leave them, leave the edges unstitched so that when I make copies of them to use in my journals, I can stitch the actual copy uh, to give it some, to give it some structure and some bulk. And I haven't made, I haven't scanned these yet, but I'm really anxious to. This one I think is my very favorite so far. I just love that one. So I thought I'd make a couple more. Um, I've been finding um, public domain images uh, to use on these. And some of my, just my collage fodder goodies. The, 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 um, these turned out really good. They turned out great. So I thought I'd make another one and then I might turn one into another journaling card. So, like I said, this is kind of, I, I, you know, I know how to collage, but I was kind of taking a page from Rachel, using her as my inspiration. Um, she mentioned in her video yesterday that um, someone commented that she always puts together such a pretty background and then she just glues right over it. And I have to admit, I've thought the same thing. I've thought, you know, oh, look at that. She did that so, and then she just glued right over it, you know. And I was thinking about that a lot because yesterday when I was doing this, um, that kept happening to me. I was gluing things on, you know, to make the background really, really attractive. And then as I started collaging on top of it, I ended up gluing over all of it. Um, and sometimes even like the background pieces of paper or things maybe that I had saved for some reason because I thought, oh, that's really pretty. So I think I'm gonna put a little less, not thought, but a little less um, precious papers on the backs. Um, I don't think they need to be, you know, as special because it just seems like every time I do it, um, I end up covering it up. So, no, I didn't want to tear that off. But, and I'm also, I can see what Rachel's saying. I like either all the edges being torn or all the edges being cut. but I, I'm not liking uh, mixing the two, mixing cut edges and um, torn edges. But it's fun. This is, um, Shan I've also watched um, Shannon Green here on YouTube. A long time ago, I was watching her. And she, um, no, it's not Shannon Green. It's um, Lori Marie Jenkins here on YouTube. And she has what she, she puts on her, for her backgrounds, her collage backgrounds. She calls it underpants. So I was watching her a while back and I cut out a bunch of collage fodder background, but I actually cut it all. Um, But I thought I'd tear this in honor of Rachel. But this is, it's its fun. I'm enjoying these. I didn't think, honestly, I didn't think that it's something that I'd be like, oh yeah. Because it's not necessarily my style in the sense that, that's cut. Um, it's not, or I'm, it seems like I'm my style is a little more bright, and this is um, a little more. Um, what am I trying to say? Vintagey looking, you know, with distressed and yellowed edges and things like that. Let's cover all that up. So I did some. Let's see, some of the ones I did yesterday, I did. 
I painted the background. This one I painted over the background with watercolor. And then this one I painted over the background with some acrylic. So I kind of like that idea if you get multiple, you know, different pages on here, or, you know, uh, papers on here for your background, and then you feel like you have sort of different shades of ivory, or there's something that's really sticking out. Um, I put some raw sienna watercolor on top of one of them, and then I used like a sandy beige color uh, acrylic, which I just put on mostly with a, with a gift card. So there's a background, and there's nothing really about that background that bothers me. That I had cut out, printed, and I've got some that I've already cut out, and then I've got some that I printed to cut out. And I'm really enjoying, oh, I wanted to do one that had um, the paper doll on it, but that takes a long time to cut out. She's not quite cut out yet. And then I thought about doing a set with fruits. So I printed, they're not, they might need to be bigger. I printed an apple, a pear, and some strawberries. I like those strawberries. But I was thinking for this, I would go with something that I already have cut out. Um, I'm going to, I hate to do it, but I'm going to go with pink again because I think pink is just my favorite color. And then maybe for the label, I'll use one of these. Got bluey. Actually, I like this with, with that, so... And I finally found, oops, I finally found my cheesecloth. I had ordered some cheesecloth, and I finally found the cheesecloth that I had been looking for last night. So I have that that I might want to use too. So I'm going to use that. That's going to be my label to put the date or whatnot on. And then in addition to the cheesecloth, I have some of these fabrics. These are... Um, Fabric header sample cards, um, actually for fabric, for um, window treatment fabrics. Whew, those are some serious staples. I pulled these apart last night. Um, so these have some great neutral kind of um, sheer fabrics in them, and they're working really well for backgrounds on these cards. Where's my card go? No, there's not enough contrast there. I think I want something lighter behind that one. So let me flip to one of these. I need to get those staples out of there before I... I don't know. That's, I kind of like that. Here's just a lint, plain linen. There's a linen with stripes. That one's nice too. Sorry. I just want to make sure I get the whole that I get as much of the usable fabric out of here as I can. If it's going to tear too bad, I'm just going to cut it right here. So I have to be honest, yesterday I'm, when I was sitting here making all these cards and I kept thinking, oh, I should turn the camera on, I should turn the camera on, part of the issue was I was listening to some music and I was just really getting into it and I did not want to turn the music off. No, that's, that's kind of pitiful. But what's the other thing I've noticed in I'd love to know if others of you have <laughs> have the same issue, but since I started making these YouTube videos, 
I have started, I've noticed that even when I'm not recording a video, but I'm doing something, I'm narrating. So it's like everything I do now, I'm narrating to someone that's not there. Um, you know, basically talking to myself as if I, as if I were making a video. You know, just trying to keep the, keep the conversation going. But I was doing it in my sewing room the other day because I was thinking, you know, oh, this would make a good video. And then I realized I was talking to myself the entire time, narrating my steps and what I was doing. And it's kind of funny. If, if I'm not alone, if anybody else does that, let me know so I don't feel like such a weirdo. I'm just kind of fraying the edge of this so it looks a little more worn, not so perfect. There we go. And then I'll have to show you the ones I made last night. I put some stamps on and then I thought, oh, I put a postmark because I had bought a while back, I bought these, um, I bought some stamps, um, like acrylic stamp or, you know, clear stamps, some stamps that I was using or that have um, post that look like postmarks. Kind of cute. Use that somehow, and I like this too. But a pattern would be good also. So I started putting these postmark stamps on top of the cards, and I kind of went crazy. I, I went a little bit crazy with the um, with the postcard stamp or postmark stamps. I'll show them to you, and you can tell me if you think. If you think it was too much, that one's cute. Oh, look, that one has a little clock. I like that. Uh, but if I want to put a stamp on this one also, then I probably don't need, let's see. How do I want to do this? little piece of this one oops it's hard to tear these such small such small swatches because you're already so close to the selvage I like this um, fabric, it's yarn dyed. So the warp and the weft are two different colors. Might be kind of cute. I did one other that I put the stamp on, the postage stamp, I put the postage stamp on um, a piece of fabric because I had put something else on there to begin with and it just wasn't working for me so I took it off. Oh, I put a little bow on one, and then I didn't like the bow, so I took it off, and and put a little stamp. So I don't know, that might be kind of cute if I put a stamp, stamp on there. And then if the stamp is, or the label, or I could put the stamp down here and put something else there. I need just a tiny, tiny piece of layer up another piece. That would be cute. Like just layer up and I could even sew it on. Layer another piece of fabric on top of that one. And I'm liking, I'm liking that yellow because that yellow is here and here. So the yellow would work or something maybe with green either one of those. And this is just regular fabrics, swatches. This isn't, um, I have another 
other bins where I keep vintage fabrics, and that's probably what I would prefer to use on this. Um, let's see, now I have this set in my head, how I want this to go. But I'm not finding, oh, let me look in, in this little box. Maybe something yellowy or green. This is, that's kind of plain. Let's see. And that's too much floral, if there is such a thing as too much floral. That might be kind of cute. Yeah, that's actually probably not a thing. Oh, I like that. Too much floral. That can't be a thing, I think. So I'm gonna have to cut this though because it's too small to try to tear it. Oops. And I think, even though I do have this dark green thread in my machine, because I've got green in here, like it needs something in the middle of it. I just cut a hole. So I guess I could I could still glue something. I could still like glue something. But I do like this. I'm gonna put that there. The other thing I was doing as I was putting these together um, was not worrying too much about making sure that everything was you know, um, super glued down because I don't really have any intention of using these originals. I'm just going to scan them. So there were a couple times, you know, that I used an original photo. And for that, I grabbed some of this, this um, mounting putty and just put a little bit of that mounting putty just to hold it on. Um, if I was putting something on that I only had, you know, one, one piece of, and I didn't want to scan it, but I did scan some of the photos, so I wouldn't use my originals. Oops. So I've been, once I get this kind of set up, then I've been going back, and if I need to do anything else to the edges, add something like here, or I'll add something. I've been doing that once I kind of get this laid out. And you can tell from looking at these, I have followed the same, you know, the same sort of recipe for every one of them as far as the layout goes. So I want to use that. I feel like maybe that needs something behind it. And this almost has a little bit of a purple cast to it. Oh, maybe I'll put a little, just in case that bright white edge is showing. Also, since I know that I'm probably going to sew around the edge of, of the copies that I'm, the, the scans that I make, I've been leaving kind of a little bit of a perimeter, I didn't leave much here, to, um, to do some stitching. So let me add, I feel like I need something here. That might be cute. This is a piece of pattern paper. The little scissors on it. That might be cute because once I get it on there, it will be, um, whoops, it won't be as dark, I don't think, once I get it on here. Although, I don't want it 
so close to the edge that it kind of competes with whatever stitching I do. But that's okay. Especially, I guess, if I do a zigzag or something, then it won't matter. I've got fabric scissors, paper scissors, and sticky scissors going. What might be cute there is like a, a button. Here's the little bow that I put on the other one. I kind of, well, I don't know. That looks funny with both of those there like that. Um, does it need anything else? need something here. What's this say? Sunrise. Hmm. That just says ing on it. I feel like now that I've got this darker piece on here, I need to balance it with something darker on the other side. Oh, this is what I'm looking for. This ultra thin craft paper that I have. It's like almost just a little bit thicker than tissue itself. Easier. So I don't think I have any buttons here on my desk. I think they're over on the other side of the room. Here's a little... Oh, I, I could put a stamp on there, I guess. That would be cute, but I think it's probably two-dimensional. It's too, too thick. Let me see if I can find a stamp. that I could just, especially if it was a smaller one, a smaller stamp that I could just put right up here. Maybe that has either the pink or that, that darker maroon. She's pretty. Maroon Queen Elizabeth. My, um, My stamp organization leaves something to be desired. But it's kind of fun just to dig through and... Then it's like you're always finding, you don't know what you have, you're always finding something new. Ooh, look at the Sam the lamb chops on that guy. Eisenhower. That one's pretty. And that kind of coordinates with that and with that. Do I like him right there? And do I want... I'm going to try to take this backing off. So I just have this stamp. Ooh, it's tearing. Very delicate procedure. I don't want to cover that up, but I'll just put it in the middle there. I guess that's the best one. Because I think another flower, because I've got flowers, flowers, well, maybe another, I don't know, maybe a small, a small flower. Something small, floral. What's that? Oh, no, that's a guy. 
This is pretty. Oh, I like the color of that. Do I like that or that? Mm, I like the darker one better. Let's see if there's anything else. Okay, we'll go with this darker one that way. I can move on and not bore you with digging through stamps. Okay. And then, this is where I kind of went crazy yesterday with my postmark. Stamps. See, so I started with, I was like, oh, I need a postcard, a postmark on top of that. So I put one on there, and then I thought, oh, I'll put one here, and here, and here, and here. And then I just went crazy with the postmark stamps. So, and I'm not sure where I got these, but I either got them at Joanne, Michaels, or Hobby Lobby. Um... I'm gonna do this kind of sepia brown color again. So, seems to be kind of an, an easy way to fill in a little blank spot. I don't know if I wanna try and stamp over that fabric though. Do a little test and see what it does. We need the big postmark for that. Ooh, actually it works really good. What kind of, it's a pigment. Hmm, that kind of works. I think black probably would have shown up better, but. So I've used it twice. I'm gonna put it a third place. Right here or right here? Which other one do I want? I feel like I need something here. I'll put this. This one that kind of alludes to Queen Elizabeth. Put that right there. I think I just hit the camera with my head. Now, see, I feel like I, I still want one down here. Maybe just something. I haven't used this one yet, although it has, I think it has um, palm trees on it, which is kind of funny because it's, it's supposed to look like a German postmark. I didn't know they had any palm trees in Germany. Okay, so I'm happy with that. That's good. So there's another one, and I'm just gonna leave it, um, I'm gonna leave it uh, unstitched at this point. You know, if I wanted to do any stitching like on the interior of it, I could definitely do that. Um, like I have this one that I want to stitch, you know, just a, a zigzag or something right across here, but I'm going to wait till I change my thread color. Um, but I'm going to leave it like this, and then if I do any stitching, I can do it after. After I make my scan. This is just a colored pencil. Kind of add some add some shadow. So that's what I've been doing guys. Um, it's really fun. I'll link to, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with Rachel's, um, with Rachel's videos, but I'm going to link to her down below. Uh, I'll, I'll link specifically to the video that I was watching. Actually, it was Aosier's video that made me think, oh, I could make them and scan them. So I'm going to link to her video and then, um, I'll also put some links down below to, um, to some of Rachel's and um, here's the one I did for my journal that I put in my journal yesterday and then um, th 
there's another one that I just kind of prepped up. The, it would be fun too, because I haven't sewn on this one, but I could sew a pocket onto the back of this one. Just stitch something on there, and then I could put my journaling down inside, um, down inside there. So something a little different for me, but was definitely a lot of fun, and I encourage you guys to try it, because once you get into it, I'm telling you, you just, you just can't stop. So anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. If you enjoyed this one, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.